morning and welcome. Hello. It's time for us to have a lovely time. I'm lifting some weight so I can be real strong. Ed's doing squats and this is the theme song. Ben's doing press ups and Will's running fast. Mark's muscles are vast and Joe's doing star jumps. That's why I mentioned him last. He's jumping like a star in the Horn section, section podcast. podcast. It's the Horn section podcast. It's the Horn section podcast. It's the Horn section podcast. La 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 la. La 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 la. La 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 la. La 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 la. Let's go because it's the Horn section podcast. In Woo. isolation, let's kick things off even higher with a song. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a song higher, the from goes. Joe Auckland, and Joe, I've decided to save the uh, sexy song till next week. So instead, we're going to be celebrating your qualification as a butcher. Isn't that right, Joe? Thank you. Yes. Sheep, legs, shoulders, flank and shank, flank and shank, legs. Shoulders flank and shank, flank and shank, and eyes and ears scrag and a jump. Legs, shoulders flank and shank, flank and shank. Cow! Shin, brisket, rump and clod, rump and clod. Shin, brisket, rump and clod, rump and clod, and lips and hooves and tongue and butthole. Shin, brisket, rump and clod, rump and clod. Pig! Rib, belly blade and hock, blade and hock. Rib. Belly blade and hock, blade and hock, and chitterlings, piggy bulls and piggy cock. Rib, belly blade and hock, blade and hock. Yeah. Oh, it's an oh, educational. Goat. goat. <clears throat> oh. uh, next week we'll do goat. Chicken. Oh, good. There's loads. And chicken, yeah. yeah, yeah there's we'll another we'll There's another song in there. There is. Yeah. There's, it's going to be a box set. Well, it's an Great. educational start to the show, so let's not bo- not bother talking about it anymore. And instead, let's meet our one-person guest isolation audience. This guy needs some introduction. He's from American. He's America. What? He's in America. <laughs> he is America. That's right. It's Hank Green. Yay! It's Hank Green. Hello, Hank. And welcome to the Horn Section Podcast. It's lovely to be here. That, and that was an excellent beginning, I think. You waited for your gap and said something. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going for. I, like, I, 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 f- I feel like people have to say something there. I would say, Hank, and this no disrespect, but a few months ago, our worlds hadn't collided and I was somehow not aware of of you but since then everywhere I've gone, I've, I've found Hank Green. I do, I, yes, I'm everywhere but in a low level. Yeah. I'm always I'm always somewhere, but I'm never there too much. Yes. Okay. But now you have overlapped into my life. Yeah. So what I thought we'd do is paint a sort of Hank Horn Venn diagram. Okay. So in your circle, you say what you do, and I'll say what I do, and then we can show the listener the little bit in the middle why why we're overlapping. Okay. Today, because the listeners tend to have a pen and pencil for this <laughs> podcast. Yeah. So they, you have to do. You can you take to up, show your work. Yeah. Yeah. So listener, you can now. Take the lid off your pencil and start drawing. Um, what's in your circle, Hank? What are the, what are the general things you do? Um, I am a, a science communicator, so I talk about science stuff. Um, I am an entertainer, generally, so I make funny videos and podcasts. And I am a novelist, so I write books that are mostly about internet things. Internet mm-hmm. culture, the, the effects of the internet uh, on, on people, young people specifically. That kind of thing. But they're also, they're science fiction-y. Okay, you've used, yeah, the word science more than I thought you were going to. Oh, well, the surprise, there's also that part of me. That's like my, that's my main gig. That's what I spend most of my time doing. That science is well in your circle. There's no science in my circle. So I've got music in mine and comedy. Yeah. And I suppose a bit of YouTube and a bit of podcasting. Yeah. I also do music and, and particularly musical comedy, though I have not done that in a long time. That, that, that job has taken a backseat, unfortunately. It is hard yeah. to be a musician when you have kids. Yeah, it's hard to be a musician. For also sto- that. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, my band have all got kids except for one of them. And I don't think it's stopped them, but then that's all they do. They, right. they have nothing. They have no science. They have no <laughs> they comedy. Have they have nothing. They have, they all have they nothing. have is kids and music. It's terrible. That, that's what, a, what a terrible life that is. <laughs> it's, a, it's a funny one. I'm quite jealous. It's quite a simple life they lead, these little men. <laughs> The, fi- the five little men who are doing the other half of this podcast. So, we, so we're not overlapping yet. We, well, we overlap a bit on the musical comedy bit. Uh-huh. But weirdly, you do a podcast yeah. called The Task Mistress. 
I, I have to say, can I? I don't know if I have to ask your permission for this. The the music you've done on the Task Mistress podcast, so mm-hmm. your version of our version of the horn, of the yeah. Taskmaster theme yeah. tune. I'd like to put that in this podcast. Sure. Do I, I can, have to ask your I can, permission? I can, I can ask permission. I'll, I will ask permission of the people who who did those things. I'm sure that. So they it wasn't will say you yes. who did that? No, no, I'm not did out that? here with a saxophone somewhere, just like playing. <laughs> no, that wasn't me. But what's funny is that your guys who did that didn't ask our permission to use our music. No, that's true. So, so technically, you could def- you could definitely do it. It is <laughs> your property. Say, yeah. <laughs> but I will put some of that in now because I love it. Taskmistress is is me and my wife, and and my wife takes on the role of the taskmaster, and she judges Greg's judgments, mm. and I take on the role of Alex Horn, and I'm Little Hank Green, and yeah. <laughs> uh, and I I basically compliment you. <laughs> it's my role in the podcast is just to be like, wow, Alex really did a great job on this one. Yeah, you, you you're mostly nice. Your your wife called me Alan in episode <laughs> six. <laughs> which is something that, that it's a sort of running joke in the band that the, the trumpeter calls me alan so that oh, was nice okay but yeah so we're we are now making a podcast about a guy who makes a podcast about a program that i make yeah i think that that's the right way to go well i, I enjoy your podcast it's pretty surreal because you're starting at the beginning right and it is very different and you were yeah. less good at it <laughs> Yeah, it's ancient history, so I'm quite embarrassed about some of the episodes. Mm-hmm. Or not embarrassed, but it's definitely, you hope that you would improve. Right. But, did, how but, much you know, did you learn from Ramesh Ranganathan almost dying eating a watermelon? Well, that was the very first day that we'd ever filmed, and I thought this is, that's going to be the last day we ever film as well. But I don't think we learned anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's happened again. Oh, he's nice, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Very nice. Lovely. Yeah. But, lads, want to hear a joke? Sure. Yes, please. Please. Well, here's Willip with a joke. Play him in, please, Mark. <laughs> Willip, I hear you're going to be doing something special after Pancake Day this year. That's right, Alex. I'm giving up Smarties for lint. <laughs> <laughs> well done, <Yeah>. Willip. <laughs> Thanks. It's a great joke, but lads... Yeah. Lads, do you want to play a game of Lingo Bingo? Yes, yes please. Yes. Sure. Let's play. Ooh, yes, this is Lingo Bingo. Yes, it is. This is Lingo Bingo. Yes, 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 it is. This is Lingo Bingo. Yes, this is Lingo Bingo. Go, yes, this is Lingo Bingo. Yes, this is Lingo Bingo. Uh, round one, it's obviously spot the song. I've replaced every other word with either slippery or snake. Shout your name if you think you've got it. I'll play our instruments, isn't that better? Oh, I'll play your instruments, yes. Slippery was snake, like Slippery Beauty Snake from Slippery Movie Snake. Snake said Slippery Mind. <laughs> slippery, what you, what snake you snake? I snake the snake. Snake will slippery on snake floor, snake the slippery. Snake said, snake am slippery one. Snake will slippery on slippery floor. Snake the slippery. Snake told snake her snake was slippery, Jean. Yes, Mark? It's Billy Jean. It is Billy Jean! Bloody hell, well done. Snake told snake her snake was slippery, Jean. Slippery, she slippery ah. a snake. Yeah. <laughs> slippery, every snake turned slippery eyes, well etc. That's good. I'm amazed you got thought that. It must be a song about a snake. Another great game. This is destined for TV. <laughs> Well, it's round two in which I've changed all the T's and W's and V's and R's to M's. <laughs> Here we go. Smeem, Malks, Mamely, Dom, me, Smeem. Mim, me, Mim, pulled me, Dom, Lom. Ain't no sound, but me, sound of his theme. Machine guns, Medi, Mogo. Aim you, meedy. Hey, aim you, meedy, for miss. Aim you hanging on my edge of you seam. Um of me, do me, me, bullems, mip, mo, me, sound of me beam. Chorus now. A nom hem, oh, one bimes, me, dozen. Yes, Joe? No, I haven't got it. A nom hem, one bimes, me, dozen. And a nom hem, one go. Ed. Yes, Ed. Another one bites the dust. It is another one bites the dust. Oh, oh well done. Yes. Hom, do you mink? I'm gonna gam along. Mim hum, you men, you'm gone. I thought you were just reading the Jabberwocky pipe. <laughs> it's one point to Joe, one point to the pianist. 
and it's the final round. Uh, it's called round three, in which I've changed the first four words to one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, bring your friends. One, two, three, four, and to pretend. One, two, three, four, self-assured. A one, two, three, four, a dirty word. One, two, three, four, low. A one, two, three, four, low. A one, two, three, four, low. One, two, three. A one, two, three, four, it's less dangerous. One, two, three, four, entertain us. One, two, three, four, contagious. One, two, three, four, entertain us. Smells like teen spirit. It is smells like teen spirit. Much better version. They're both all great games there. More. Let's see some more, Alex. And the game more. ends 2 1 to Joe Auckland. No, hello. I scored a point. Yeah, and I only scored one, I think. I think you've given me one. 1 1 point. 1. I can't change the scores now they've been given. Fair enough. Well, Let's go back Jean. to Hank. <laughs> Everyone ready to go back to Hank? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Please say hello, Hank. Hello, hello Hank. Hank. When I asked you to describe yourself, you uh-huh. did, but you did mention music eventually. Uh-huh. Um, Wikipedia has has it the third of your jobs. Okay. Uh, well, you it's maybe Ameri- some American video blogger number one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, you've released four studio albums, Hank. Well mm-hmm. done. One live album, two compilation albums. God. Do you want to guess which one, which name I like best out of your albums? There's two I like best. I re- I really like. I'm so bad at this live. That's what I've got. I'm yeah. so bad at this live. Two thousand and nine. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I also like Ellen Hardcastle. Yeah, because I heard the story of why why it's called that. Yeah, it was a it was a charity auction basically. It was like a raffle, and I I was gonna I named the album after the winner of a raffle, and amazingly, ended up with a person with a very cool name. It's a really cool name, yeah. Ellen Hardcastle. I think having hard in it mm-hmm. gives it an edge. Yeah, and Ellen makes it feel a bit Eleanor Rigby or something. It's yeah. yeah. But I'm so bad at this live is good. <laughs> Because it's got an exclamation mark at the end and a colon. Yeah, yeah. Also, uh, uh, it's, it's something that I said during the live show. Is that why it's called yeah, that? Yeah. I'm so bad at this. It was great, <laughs> though. It's great to, yeah, it's a, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't listen to it unless you're a big fan. <laughs> oh, all of our stuff comes with that caveat. Yeah. I wouldn't listen to this unless you're really into us. Because yeah. I think we're, we quite, when you were producing music, you were producing music, well, you did a thing once every two weeks, you put out a song, is that right? Yes. Because yep. I think, I don't see why musicians don't do that in general. I don't understand why bands don't put out a song every single week. Uh, yeah, I think there might be a supply and demand problem there. Like if you make so much stuff, eventually people are like, yeah, I'm not going to, but, but, but I think you end up with way more good stuff. You also end up with way more bad stuff. Yeah. I think, what's his name? Ed Sheeran, doesn't he? He produces just tons of stuff, and so he mm. just puts out the good stuff quite often. Right. But he's also got a backlog of... I, I just think it can't take that long. To... <laughs> I mean, your songs... I have friends, how... I have friends who, who spend months writing a single song, and I'm like, yeah. I do not understand. I do not understand. Mm. I understand spending a long time producing a song, mm. and like that there might be like steps that you go through and lots of different people involved, but I do not... Like, but that's then. not how I've done it. Like With us, we went into the studio and we recorded sometimes... Like all of us at once, sometimes individual tracks. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you record like four songs a day. Oh, you can write four songs a day, record them, put them out. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered if we could do something musical together. Oh, we had Reggie Watts on at the beginning of this Amazing. series, and yeah. he sort of set us a musical challenge. Well, I've got two options for you. We can either do a jazz cover of one of your old songs mm-hmm. of your choice. I like um, Baby I Sold Your Dog on eBay. Oh my but God. I also. I, I also like Shake a Booty. Those are my two favorites. Baby, I Sold Your Dog on eBay is the oldest of my songs. That's the that's the first song that I wrote that I actually recorded. Um, and I recorded it way after I wrote it. Um, is that right? It feels yeah. like a proper comedy song. You know, yeah. you could see that in any comedy yeah. set. Not any comedy set, but you could, it would fit into a comedy set. Sure. Well, anyway, if you want to choose a song, we can do a jazz version. Or if you want to play... Uh, some guitar riffs and say a couple of words we can flesh it out into a song those are your two options yeah i want to do the first one because i can't yeah. play guitar riffs well let's let's <laughs> uh, let's do the first one is there a song you want us to cover um gosh i mean so it was it was ebay and what was the other one? Oh no those are just my choices i i, I oh the other one was shake a booty because it's so stupid i mean oh i love that yeah yeah that sounds like a very weird dumb song to do a jazz cover of yeah <laughs> I mean, I, I always want to default to the hits, the ones that, that people shout out at the shows, mm-hmm. which neither of those are. I don't think there's any Baby I Sold Your Dog on eBay fans in the world. Well, uh, I've put that out there, so people will hopefully go and look for that. Oh, God. Ugh. Um, <laughs> it, it, was, it was old enough that I had to change the lyric because, uh, because the, the, I, I referenced a gaming system in the, in the song, <laughs> and by the time I finally recorded it, it was like four, four gaming systems out of date. Um, <laughs> 
It's uh, a sort of song yeah. where the title is as funny as the song, I suppose. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's the problem. In, in, in many, yeah, a lot in of many that. musical comedy songs are actually just the same joke over and over again, but like yeah. you can get away with it because you're making rhymes while you're doing it. And complete, and they've stopped laughing, but they still have to applaud at the end. Yeah, because that's the deal. Yeah, I'd want to do. I want. I'd want you to do a jazz cover of a song about an anglerfish, which is a song that I actually like. Yeah, uh, good video as well. I mean, I, I've come into contact with a lot of anglerfish recently. Oh, weird. Uh, not but your one, contact. there's a lot of words in that song. It's true. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. I might make Mark the saxophonist sing that because I think that's the challenge. Okay. It's an educational song. As you do learn, and it's also very sad. It's very sad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true that I once went through life As the guy who always had to rhyme life with strife Yes, I've been burned and I've been spurned and through it all Yes, I have learned that love is not a fun Whether you get stuck but how slow the knife gets turned But my friend, I found an animal who doesn't feel this pain And my life is so much better now that I can feel the same because you can't hate the night if you've lived your whole life without light And you can't hate the dish if you've only ever eaten fish And you can't feel alone if it's all you've ever known Yeah, the deep sea anglerfish has no reason to be happy But it has no frickin' idea what else to be The deep sea dwelling anglerfish never has to find a mate They are always there together when it's time to procreate See one dog and her young male bites a female on her side And then slowly he becomes a sperm producing parasite And if we can say he lives at all, he lives until she dies And until the day he literally never leaves her side yeah, you can't hate the night if you've lived your whole life without light. You can't hate the dish if you've only ever eaten fish. And you can't feel alone if it's all you've ever known. Yeah, the deep sea anglerfish has no reason to be happy, but it has no freaking idea what else to be. For years this rule has kept me out of hopeless despair. You simply do not feel oh, what is always there. I ask my brain to entertain that pain is the same, that if I feel it all the time, could you really call it pain? I don't have any friends and I don't have any hair But neither does the anglerfish and she doesn't care Cos you can't hate the night if you've lived your whole life without light And you can't hate the dish if you've only ever eaten fish And you can't feel alone if it's all you've ever known yeah, the deep sea anglerfish has no reason to be happy, but it has no freaking idea what else to be. Anglerfish. Oh, all right, lads. All right, all right, right. mate. Want, want, want to hear a joke? Please. Yeah. Please play in a joke for Willip, please, Mark. Hey, Willip, I, I gather you've got a question for me, and it's a joke, and the punchline is the final word. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Hey, Alex, you've always loved roads lined with trees, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> look, I've got to be honest, I haven't been able to look for uh, anyone's bins this week. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. That's I stayed a shame. Out, I know, I stayed outside Paul Oakenfold's house for a fortnight. <laughs> <laughs> but it turns out he's got he's got multiple chutes in his walls that go straight into the main subterranean rubbish highway, and it, he doesn't need any bins. <laughs> but luckily, I was sent a message by a listener of the show called Robert Palmer, and I don't know if it's the Robert Palmer. He doesn't say he doesn't say not the Robert Palmer, so I guess it probably is he's the dead. Robert Palmer, the singer songwriter who died in two thousand and three. <laughs> and Robbie Palmer says, "Hi, Alex in the section. I messaged your Facebook page the other day with a terrible idea for a song." and got a reply suggesting I send it to you on here. You might think it's awful, which is fair enough, but if you happen to like it, then it's yours. It's entitled The Best Thing Ever. I've put his lyrics to music. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. Sure. Yes, please. This is Robbie Palmer and Alex Horn. I've come up with this thing I struggle to describe I've searched for a comparison, but it's the best I must surmise. How do I tell the world of the greatness I've achieved? With nothing to compare it to in all of history. It's the best thing ever. Nothing quite comes close. 
I think it'll set the standard, though I don't wish to boast. Oh, I'd hate for you to feel like, oh, you have been misled. But I challenge you to make something better than sliced bread. Hey! There we go. Rob, nice. Robbie's song. Very good. Yeah, lovely. So, so if you've got a funny idea at home, do send it to us, and then we don't have to write the songs. <laughs> Did everyone get it? The idea of the song? Yeah, sliced from... bread. Yeah. 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 If you inv- if you invented sliced bread, what do you compare it to? That's the idea. Yeah. Thanks, Robbie. But let's check in with Mr. Hank Green. <laughs> what shocked me most about your Wikipedia entry? Oh uh, no. The headline. No, it was just uh this is what because I was thinking, reading a lot of it, thinking, oh, we're quite similar in some ways. Uh but it says you're a CEO. Mm-hmm. I didn't even I you know, I'd heard the phrase, but I don't think I've ever met a CEO before. I, well, I had to look up what it stands for. Oh, really? Yeah. That that is that is a that is a surprise to me. I would have got there eventually, but I think I was struggling. It doesn't make any sense. The three words. <laughs> which, which, <laughs> okay, continue. Please explain. Which of the three words do mm-hmm. you think pleases you most? The fact that you're a chief, an mm. executive, or an officer? That's a great point. Um, none of them. I don't. I didn't mean to be a CEO, though. I guess I hmm. have always. So I, I. I think that I also have the the little bit of guilt that you mentioned earlier, because my grandfather was a executive, and so right. he paid for my schooling, and yeah. uh, and so I, I always had a little bit of a like a hope that I would be able to sort of like make that that back in a way, like make good on his investment in me. Sure. And uh, and so yeah, I, and I, and he would like. He gave me like business simulator video games when I was a child. Did he? And I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, like, uh, like roller or uh, like, uh, what is it called? Roller coasters. Like you run, you run a theme park. So like, it's oh, a business yeah, simulator, yeah, yeah, but it's yeah, not yeah. like a boring business simulator. You're. Uh, it sounded boring when you first mentioned yeah. it, but now it's, it's it exciting. is still quite boring. But at least there's roller coasters. Um, Do people ever call you chief? No, never. Uh, they never call me executive or officer. In fact, no one at my company would ever call me. Maybe even, uh, very rarely do they even call me their boss. Uh, <laughs> do you have Do you have a long car or shiny toys? That's in my head. That's what a business executive has. They have a long car yeah. and lovely shiny toys. I have some. I'm sure, I'm sure I have some shiny toys. There's this. They should be on your desk at all times, and you should put your hands. But oh, that it's, is quite executive. It's pretty shiny. That's like a, it's like a silver cigar box. Yeah. Do you think there's cigars in there? Little cigarillos? I don't think. I don't think there are cigars. I think there are mints in there. Oh, flash makeup? cards. Flash cards. Cool. Makeup. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you're a CEO, we're uh-huh. going to play a game of uh, IBM, which is uh, it stands for Initialisms Between Men. <laughs> we're, we're, we're the men, uh-huh. and we're going to do initial... Because CEO, for the listener, you probably know it's an initialism. It's not an acronym, because an acronym has, uh, has to be a word. So uh, I'm going to say some American initialisms, uh-huh. uh, because I, I like Americanisms, uh-huh. and uh, you've got to say immediately what they stand for. If you don't know, you have to say something immediately that sounds like it. What it could be, okay. What it could stand for. All right. If you get most of them right, I'll send you a green T-shirt. Okay. Where did just uh, uh, just one you, you have lying around? No, it's one of the special green T-shirts that oh. we give out on this podcast okay. every probably about two a year. We give out. Okay. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> oh, you, I will have some fun music underneath this. What sort of music do you want me to ask the pianist to try to make? Oh, um, uh, sort of. Uh, Chill, noir, jazz. Yeah. Here we go. First initialism. Uh, IBM. What does IBM normally stand for? International Business Machines. Which is ridiculous. Can, <laughs> you yeah, think like, you told me what, that, do, we, what thought... do we make? Well, there are machines that like the business is like. Uh, but for everybody in the whole world. So Just a business. What is a business machine? <laughs> it's a computer, isn't it? Yeah. I love that. Yeah, if you'd ma- I would have said, no, you've made that up, but it is correct. Yeah. International business machines. Uh, Kmart. This is a boring one. Oh, um, cost mart. Except because we always do Ks where there's Cs. We do that all the time here. Yeah, well, K is a good word for advertising, apparently, because it's spiky. It didn't used to be, but we have special K over here, and lots of people put Ks into things, like TK Maxx, because it looks fun. But in the old days... People were scared of it, and the KKK didn't help. But yeah. um, that's not why you've got Kmart. Kmart stands for Kresge, a man called Sebastian S. Kresge. Well, good. I'm glad that he got he got his 
name in there. CVS, please, Hank. Oh, God. Can Vols shop? <laughs> and that is weirdly what it's... No, it's consumer value stores. No, yeah, and that did not... We didn't have CVS where I lived growing up. Now they're okay. everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Well, look, you're, you can still get the green T-shirt, but oh. you need to get zip code. I didn't know zip code stood for something. Oh, what starts with Z? Yeah. Do you not I, know this? I was so confident after international business machines. Yeah. Um, zone has yes. to be zone. It is zone. Um, I mean, the, they're both difficult. Well, you might get you might get the P. The I is a problem, I think. Uh, zone. No idea. In place. Zone improvement plan. <gasps> oh, that's great. It's weird. That's great. I mean, they, were, they were like, our zone plan is terrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the last one wasn't, and you're right, it's an acronym. And this is another acronym. Um, acro acronym. The USA Patriot or Patriot Act. Do you know that's an acronym? Yeah. I mean, we always do that. But no, But this I one's no ridiculous. Idea. Yeah. <laughs> this is... Even the USA. You really set me up for a failure here, man. You, you cheat me off. I was feeling so good. Well, look, this one, I'll do this one. It's uniting and strengthening America by providing appropriate tools required to intercept and obstruct terrorism. Wow. You know, I, was, I, I wouldn't have even guessed that the beginning part of that was also part no, of the acronym. But it's such a good acronym. Whoever came up with it must have been so happy. Yeah. You know, when they went into the meeting and said, I've come up with it. They're like, well, that's going to pass. We've yeah, got it. It's in not the even bag. too forced. Yeah. Providing appropriate tools required to intercept and obstruct terrorism. Anyway. They just um, left that A out, though. They were like, that's not going to count. Yeah. I like it when they do that. Yeah. Um, easy one. UPS. Uh, United Parcel Service. Correct. If you get two of the next four, I'll give you the T-shirt. Oh, wow. Okay. E ESPN. Uh, everyone's like face. Sports. Yes. Yes. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Entertainment and sports. Oh, place. programming network. Uh, programming. Yeah. Well, I want you to win the green T-shirt, so I'm going to chuck in PC. Uh, personal computer or politically correct? No, it's personal computer. But I find that I think we can lose the P, can't we now? Because <laughs> okay. I mean, it's not a business machine. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I call mine just a C now. Yeah. Bin, you know. Do you have bins in America? Bin, like the place where you throw trash? Yeah, but it's actually an acronym. That's not true. It's a badness ingestion network. That's what I've got. <laughs> um, D <laughs> D DFTBA. Oh, it's Don't Forget to Be Awesome. It is Don't Forget to Be Awesome. That's the name of your record label, because yeah. you've got everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I even have a record label that hasn't produced a record in... Uh, like eight years because we are now just a merch company. It doesn't matter. It yeah. doesn't matter. Oh, okay, it's time for the big coincidence, Hank. Ooh, I can't wait. Yeah, you do a lot of things with your brother, John. Uh-huh. Uh, most notably your Vlog Brothers YouTube channel. Yep. I don't know if this is fair to say, but nearly a billion views. That's fair to say, yeah. 800 million. So mm -hmm. still 200 million off a billion. It's true. That's a long way. That's a lot of, yeah. that's a lot of ground to cover. But yeah. you're a lot closer to a billion than most people. But our... Um, but our educational YouTube channel that we also do together has more than, I think, 2 billion views. So you can add, just toss those in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, my brother, uh, I've got a couple of brothers, but my younger one, he works at YouTube. Oh. And, um, well, I told him that I was interviewing you and, uh, and he replied, he sent me a message. So I'm going to read you out his message and I'm going to bleep some of the words. Do you want to guess what his words were? The words um, you're going to bleep? Yeah. Just, just my little brother's reaction to when he, when he, when I told him that I was meeting you. Is it, is it, did, it, did he use the C word? Because I know you guys use the C word a lot. <laughs> but we don't. I'm going to see. He didn't use a lot of C words. You know what? He didn't use any words beginning with... Oh, he used creators. That was his only word okay. beginning with C. That's actually... And channel. That's actually worse. Uh, creators. Okay, he said, oh... What's the, what's the missing word there? What was his second word? Oh... Shit. Fuck. Wow. Oh, wow. He oh, went for shoot. wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's a... Three words there. Uh, a really cool guy. Very big deal. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> he said he's kind of a grandfather figure for YouTube creators. Grandfather figure. Yeah. Yeah. 40 and years old. <laughs> <laughs> he founded VidCon, 
Now, this is where it gets interesting. I, I met Hank. Mm. My brother's met you. Isn't that weird? That is weird. I met Hank a while back at EduCon London, yep. maybe February 2019. Yep. Would be impressed if he remembered me, but I was doing a talk on... <laughs> what do you think my brother was doing a talk on? Oh, God! Uh, EduCon 2019... And this Come was on, that was in London, and that it was, was in London. It was a it, he. So we I heard several talks at Educon 2019 in London. Was he giving a talk on? Was it was it on analytics? It, well, it might be. I don't understand my brother. It, channel memberships. Oh, oh, I was, that was the other thing I thought of. <laughs> God damn! You remember it. the guy? You remember the yeah, talk? Yeah. Remember the guy? What I couldn't like? picture him. Couldn't picture him. <laughs> I was focused <laughs> on the information. I actually think I gave him a hard time. Oh, I hope so. He I think more I gave like you than me. Yeah, if, if, ask him if I gave him a little bit of a hard time, because I think I did. Well, he, he enjoyed it, but he also said one more thing about you. He said he had his <laughs> with him. What did you have with you, Hank? I had my... Nope. You had Mike with you. You had your dad my with dad! you. My dad! Yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway. I was like, I, was like I, I didn't have my son with me, and that's the only thought I had. Yeah, yeah it's the opposite. You were yeah. the son that yeah. you had with yourself. Yeah. Um, so Chip is my brother, and he had some quite niche questions for you. Oh God! Because he's in that world, uh-huh. and uh, but I don't want him in this podcast because we have a different relationship, me and my brother, to you and your brother. So I've got my bandmate to voice his words. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is Ben the drummer's question. Hi, Hank. Ben, the drummer here. So in terms of YouTube creators versus traditional media companies, where are we headed? Obviously, at the moment, you can be an individual creator, podcaster, self-publishing author or whatever, and not need to go through any gatekeepers to build a big audience and make a good living. But there's no way you could make a show like Taskmaster without the infrastructure of a TV company behind it. And Taskmaster isn't even a hugely ambitious or expensive show. Is there a future world where creators will be able to make shows like that? If so, how do we get there? Thanks. Uh, I think that... Th- that there is a there is a difference in the thing when you have a creator who then goes off to make something like Taskmaster. Like it, at that point, you are not just sort of a, a, an independent creator that's doing their own thing. I think of this in terms of music because we're stuck in terms like we're stuck in the frame of video, and in video because it has traditionally been really expensive to make, we we have these this infrastructure that that we imagine. But with music, it can be expensive to make a song and a music video and all the stuff and the, the live shows and et cetera. But it can also be extremely inexpensive, like free basically to make mm-hmm. music. And so we have to start imagining video inside of the frame of the music industry where it's like one person can make something that is very good and that many, many, many people will love and they can make it for free. But if they want to go on tour and have fireworks and, you know, and start a, uh, uh, you know, like a, headphone company and all that stuff like there will be a there will be a, a way to build infrastructure around creators and if they want to go into more traditional things like if you want to be a musician and you want to start a television show that's something that people have done and can do um, but it is not something that like is a normal thing to do and it is also not like the it's not like the job of a musician to do that so i think a creator going to make a television show would be like a you know like Donald Glover or like going to make a TV show while also mm. being a musician. Well, I'll pass all that on to Chip. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry that won't be funny while answering these things. I'm incapable of not taking this stuff extremely seriously. <laughs> well, I think that's a good thing about podcasts. Oh, guys, so far it's been a really super podcast, hasn't it, guys? Yeah, yeah. It has. Yeah, man. Very good. I love Hank. He's great, isn't he? And I have to say, I haven't enjoyed myself this much since my birthday back in September, which I genuinely did enjoy, even though I'm now 42. Uh, when I woke up on my birthday, I felt really special inside because it was my special day. And then all day, people were nice to me and they said happy birthday to me. And that made me feel special too. And I got some cake and I unwrapped some presents and it was just brilliant because it was my day and nobody else's. And I've probably got another 40 of them. So the only thing that can make me feel happier now is... Another joke from uh, Willip Collier. Mark, do you mind playing in another joke from Willip? (laughs) Hey, Willip, um, what's the safest piece of music by J.S. Bach? It's probably Air on the Side of Caution. (laughs) (laughs) Marvellous. I am so... God damn sorry for being so God damn funny. I am so apologetical for being so.
so hysterical. I can't apologize enough for making everybody laugh. I just don't know why. I'm such an effortlessly funny guy. I must apologize for leaving you demoralized. I must apologize for making you laugh with your mouth and your eyes. Cause I am. No one's arguing with that. No. My anthem. Great. Whew. Well done, Willop. Thank you. We're all thinking it. No, <laughs> now you've sung it. <laughs> okay, Hank, uh, if you're up for it, we're going to write a song together now. Um, oh, God. But we, we, we don't need to worry about the music. It's just the lyrics. We're going to write the lyrics. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do it the, the way that... Um, Simon and Garfunkel did it, uh, one word at a time. So you do, I do a word, then you do a word, and back and forth. <clears throat> okay. That's, that's how they wrote um, mm -hmm. Feeling Groovy, whatever the name of that song is. All right, it's a folk song about technology, if that's all right. Great. Don't think about it at all. You Here got it. Here we go. Uh-huh. Um, if you want a smaller device. Lovely. That's the first line done. Mm -hmm. I think I'm now, I want to listen to the rest of the song. <laughs> We really hooked them in. It's a big if, isn't it? Well, I guess most people do want smaller devices. Although I don't... I don't know. They're getting bigger now. Uh, what, what? Phones? Are the phones getting bigger again? I suppose they are, aren't they? Well, maybe they're going back. I don't know. Mine... I wouldn't mind a small... What device do I want that's smaller? I wouldn't... Yeah. Well, anyway, that's why, that's why it's an intriguing song, I suppose. <laughs> okay, if you want a smaller device, why don't you put your... Device inside ice. Because <laughs> <laughs> everyone knows that shrink stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's like rice dries it out, uh -huh. but ice makes it smaller. Yeah. It's, 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 it's okay. Like, so that's yep, that's how Adam's work. Yep. That's the first couplet, uh -huh. and we'll do the second couplet, and mm -hmm. then that'll be this. That'll uh -huh. be that done. You don't have to try that. Guys, 
I've ended with guys. Okay. Of, Everything, of yeah, lots of rhymes with guys. Actually, that's great. That's a secret uh, yeah. secret lyricist trick. Is just end end in words that sound like I, and then yeah. you can. And it's with not anything. far off. It's not far off ice or it's device true. as well. So yeah. the whole four lines. It could could be a great song. This. Yeah. Um, just remember. Never. Ever. Eat. Your. Rice. There it is. Never ever eat your rice. That's it's the worst thing you can do if you want a if you want a smaller device. <laughs> but I think that in a folk song will be pretty special. Mm, I can't wait. Yeah. Okay. It's gonna uh, be it's gonna be hard to, to make that meter work, but I think you can do it. They well, you've proved that you can make anything work in a song. <laughs> Uh, some more impressive stuff about you, Hank. Yeah, as you mentioned, you've written uh, books. One one came out like the July mid pandemic. Is that a good time for books? No, not particularly. All um, oh, right. <laughs> the, uh, people weren't re- weirdly. Uh, people were mostly focused on nonfiction stuff, and uh, and I think people were just too stressed out to like sit down with a book a little bit. Yeah, but it's also, hard to focus or, on anything. Or like the people, uh, this was what I was doing. And I think a lot of people were reading books that they already knew that they would love because it just wants some comfort, which, but like the book did great. I don't, don't mean to say it. It, it did do great. I yeah. looked it up. I was almost disappointed by how well it did. You know, when you're hoping, because <laughs> <laughs> failure is much funnier. It would have been nice if I said, well, that didn't work. Yeah. You've also invented something that I'm quite jealous of. You mm-hmm. invented 2D glasses, which allow you to watch 3D films in 2D. Yeah, which I think is I mean, really it was just so that I could have invent to, could have invented something. And and so that this kind of conversation would happen. Yeah, you've got an invention stem now yeah. in Wikipedia. Yeah. I've invented uh four things, food gloves, which I do think will happen at some point. Mm-hmm. I think it's just gloves with a serrated edge on a couple of them. So you never I think there's no need to be holding things to eat your food yeah. when we've got we've got our fingers. Mm-hmm. Um, so food gloves, sport beer, diet tequila, and alcoholic water. <laughs> I think I, I think alcoholic water would really work. Yeah, no it's almost it's alcohol. almost happening. Like the like it's basically just you know you have white claw. Pardon? Do you have white claw? Do you know what white claw white is? White claw? No, I don't know what. I thought you said white claw. Yeah, no, I don't know what. White it's claw a is. very successful brand of alcoholic seltzer. So, you know how like soda water, beca- I don't know, in, in America anyway, soda water became a big thing with LaCroix okay. and then, and then they were like, ah, we yeah, can put LaCroix. some. Yeah, LaCroix. We don't know what LaCroix is at all. It's spelled L-A-C-R-O-I-X. And yes, and we're, but we're it's not, called, we but in it's, America. People, but stop saying LaCroix. It it's LaCroix because it's named no, no, after, sorry. it's named after a city in Wisconsin, not anything to do with France. Is that right? LaCroix. Yeah. yeah. Why or a it? river okay. or something. Yeah. All right. But it's horrible. It's sort of... It's wonderful. Like it. It's not wonderful. I love it. I mean, I don't like any fizzy water. But I'm anyway, embarrassed yeah. to ask for fizzy water in a restaurant. If I, if they said you want fizzy or still, yeah. you have to say tap water. Otherwise, you're an awful person. What? Why? I didn't know this. Thank you for clearing this up for me. You can't ask for fizzy water. Why not? I just think... Because it's, it's not as... If you want a fizzy drink, then have a lemonade. If you want water, then we've got it in a tap. Well, you've completely confused me because lemonade isn't fizzy. <laughs> <laughs> it's all fizzy. falling apart it's now. <laughs> well, hang on a minute. Is orange aid fizzy? Well, I don't know what orange aid is. We don't have that. Well, it's fizzy orange. That's because aid means fizzy. No. Gatorade is fizzy? Do you have Gatorade? No, we don't have Gatorade. We have Lucas aid, and Lucas aid can be fizzy, but not always. Okay. Who's Lucas? <laughs> Uh, you do do a bit in your podcast about the Britishisms yeah. in the Yeah, well, I've written, I've written down one from this conversation, which was saxophonist. Is that, you how, you, is that how you say saxophonist? No, it's saxophonist. I mean, it sounds way better than saxophonist. I think that we should do that. But no, I've never heard someone say sex, saxophonist. <laughs> so saxophonist. Lovely, but you don't get the words. The word saxophone has been mangled in yeah. order to make it a nice sounding word. Do you say telephonist or telephonist? I don't think that there are telephonists. What does a telephonist do? <laughs> Just talk on the phone? Yeah, they or use make the te- Or make phones. Okay. It's like, like imagining someone a in a forge, like, ping, ping, <laughs> just building a telephone. We're pretty much done, Hank. Where? But I have to ask you, uh, as I ask every guest now, um, what song would you like us to perform at your funeral? Because we will be there. We're coming to every guest's funeral. And we will perform your favorite song, or whatever mm-hmm. song you want to be played at your funeral. Yeah, I've been thinking about uh, this. We'll- um, and yeah, I, I think okay. I think I'd like uh, I'd like Lady Gaga's "Born This Way" because I think it'd be really confusing. <laughs> <Yes>. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was born this way as your 
casket gets <laughs> lowered or burnt. Okay. So thanks, Hank. Thank. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, it's time for my final thought. Please, could I have some piano music, but from Mark this time? No, my keyboard's not plugged in. From the pianist, then. It could be uplifting, please, both spiritually and sort of uh, like arousing as well, please. Guys, we all need to do our bit to help the environment. Willip, what are you doing? Uh, uh, picking up litter. Joe. Shaving. Pardon? Shaving. Caving? Shaving. Yes. Mark. I'm vegan. Yeah. Good on you. Ben, of course. <laughs> Putting all my grass clippings in the correct bin. And that's all great. But what I'm doing, and what I think you should do at home, because it's easy, is to stop having ice. When I'm asked in a bistro bar, would I like ice in that? Of course I do, it's delicious. But every block of ice means another blow to the world. We can't keep harvesting ice from the Arctic and Antarctic and expect it to simply grow back. You don't need your ice to be that cold and crunchy, so say no to ice and stop those guys going over there on speedboats and hacking away at the icebergs with their ice cube slices. Thank you. And thanks to Joe Walker and Joel Porter for all their work on this podcast. And thanks to Hank Green by Miles, our best guest ever. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. See you later. Oh, I thought we were all going to say bye. I'll you can if you will. Off my mind. <laughs> bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Go then, will it? What? You can say goodbye if you want. I don't want to. I think everyone else has now. Well, I did as well. When? Uh, first. It doesn't matter. But goodbye. <laughs> That's the best bit. <laughs> if you want a smaller device, why don't you put your device inside I? Just remember never ever read your eyes Beth and Benny and Mike Beth should now be Mike's wife Benny still will be cat What do you think about that? Beth and Mike had to wait 
for a suitable date But it was definitely worth it Beth could not wait to commit Happy wedding present We hope you will enjoy It's not the day that you plan But you'll always be that special Frisbee loving engineering Liverpool supporting boys Happy wedding Met a person that just made you feel real good They make you smile and make you cups of tea This person is that person who is nice and really cool This person is the best person for me She's kind and she speaks really bonnily She's a lady and she is Becky Connolly Chom chom His bike went bang, but he fixed his inner tube. Let's get home for dinner food. The toad, the toad, the toad in the hole. Frankie, Frankie, Frankie Campbell. The toad, the toad, the toad in the hole. Frankie, Frankie, Frankie Campbell. Ooh, sha la la la, sha la 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 goo. Ooh, sha la la la, sha la 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 goo. Well, listen to this jingle, it'll tell you what to do. There's a video game podcast that's perfect for you. Ooh, shalalala, shalabalagoo. It's called Flop Talk. It's a podcast just like this, but it's hosted by Miles and Catherine and Chris. Ooh, shalalala, shalabalagoo. Subscribe yourself to Flop Talk. I'll subscribe to you. Flop Talk, Flop Talk, shalabalagoo. Ooh, shalalala, shalabalagoo. Stop. Joe Leonard. Is a man, and that's the way it is. But if you change one letter of that silly name of his, Joe Leonard would not be a man, he'd be a different mammal, a legend of the jungle, a sleek and spotted animal. Yes, what the end in Leonard's name with something like a P? He'd not be Leonard anymore, no longer a man would he be. Joe Leopard would emerge from his den. Joe Leopard, a really cool guy. Joe Leopard, I think you should change your name now. Why won't you, Joe? Why, 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 why?